Good morning, everyone. This is Linda. I am about to get out in my garden. It's Sunday morning. I've been to a couple services. Um, yeah, virtual. Mm -hmm. but nonetheless, it was beautiful. Yes. But um, this is my breakfast. And now I'm going out. Um, my little uh, uh, Maya lemon tree. Ah, she acts like she don't like that place, uh, the pot she's in. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put that baby in the ground, y'all. I'm gonna put it in the ground. But I'm just gonna bring you all with me throughout my day, right? All right, guys. So. But first, if you are not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Yeah, I will be sharing my Zone 9 garden. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get this day started. So guys, it is pretty windy um, here, and I listened to the playback of this video, and yeah, you can barely hear what I say because of the wind. So, because of that, I'm going to do this voiceover, all right? So this is one reason I like those blue tarps from the Dollar Tree, yeah. So it helps me a lot in the garden. But... This is my first season. You know, if you've been with me, uh, then you know that Hurricane Zeta, uh, I mean, brought down both of the trees that I had in my yard. So this is my first season growing my vegetables without my trees. Yeah. I did a lot of thinking, writing down drafting my garden and uh, just trying to get ideas about what is going to go where. All right. So I did come up with a plan on how I was going to tackle this garden this spring season. So the first thing I looked at is um, the location of my sun, simply because I don't have any shade. Well, I, I do have some shade, but the shade will come through time because my house will give some plants some shade at the, um, at the uh, middle of the day. At the middle of the day, uh, I will have some shade in part of my garden, all right? And the way you do this to find out if you're in a situation like I am, you don't have any trees or anything, is to get you something to drink, get you a sandwich, sit out in your garden, and see exactly where the sun is at each, at each time. So you will know. But this is what I'm doing here right now. I am um, about to put my Myers lemon tree in the ground. I noticed that some of her leaves was turning yellow and it's not because of, you know, she don't have the correct fertilizer or anything. Um, I don't know, um, you know, if she likes the pot or not. I don't think she like it. So I'm going to put her in the ground and that is the last resort. Now, I'm more than sure she's going to love being in the ground. Um, she's a tree. <laughs> so, I'm going to take her out of, the, out of the pot and I'm going to place her in the ground. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. So, the sun location. We want to know where. The sun is at each hour in our garden. So number two is to clean your garden very well. So you can really get a really good look 
at what you're working with, right? So get your garden all clean. And what I'm doing is today, I'm just going step by step. I needed to pot up, I mean, put her in the ground because for a couple of days I had been looking at her. So yeah, I needed to do that. And um, I, I don't want her uncomfortable. I want her to be fine. So I stopped everything I was doing to put her in the ground. So you want to clean your garden. And that's what I am in the middle of now. Cleaning the garden and getting all of the leaves and broken tree limbs and everything. Get them all together. That is what I'm doing here now. All right. So the next thing uh, you want to think about is um, the size of your garden. You know, what you're working with. What area are you working with? So that's another way to plan out your garden and um, having a great design on what goes where. Yeah. So number three is... So if you never created a wild part in your garden. Now, I have a wild part of my garden that I'm going to use part of it for growing um, some melons. But the other part will still remain wild. Um, you will notice a difference if you create a wild part in your garden. Now, maybe your garden is not really big. So you cannot um, afford to give up property for a wild part. So just put together three or four buckets, put them together and just grow wildflowers, um, bachelor buttons. Um, there, there is a, a wildflower mix over at the Dollar Tree. Just put some in a bucket and that is for wildlife. Now, as I said, if you never had a wild part of your garden, you will have some great benefits to that wild part. It will definitely bring in beneficial insects. You will see the difference. Try it. All right? Just try it. <laughs> okay. But, so, number four. Number four um this our garden is our space this is my space right and for that i want it to be special yes it is definitely there to grow food but a garden serves more than just food uh, your garden will calm you down when you are upset your garden will calm you down when you just need a break from the world. So you want your space to be <clears throat> serene and calming. Um, you want it to be um, comfortable, not only for you, for anyone that steps into your garden. You want them to feel this beautiful, beautiful energy. Um, yes, it's energy when you step into a garden that is so full of life. Um, you will have that feeling of having all of these beautiful plants around you. Uh, it calms you. You can pray there. Yes, you can definitely pray there. And I love praying in my garden. So this is uh, what I'm working on today. And this is in front of uh, one of my trees. And uh, I'm going to clean this area very well. Because this is what you see when you first walk into my garden. So um, I'm going to uh, drop some seeds in here. Now I put um, topsoil in here and tree limbs and leaves in here. Also, I'm, I'm just gonna clean that area. I'm gonna drop not only seeds of all kinds of flowers that I have, 
I'm going to drop bulbs all in this area, all around this tree, but I'm working with one part at a time, right? So um, that is where all, well, not all my flowers, but a lot of flowers is going to go right in that area simply because, yeah, when I walk out of my garage and I walk around my house, that is what I see before I get into my garden. So this is some seeds I'm dropping in this container. And it is, uh, I think, about five or six seeds I dropped in here. Some uh, black and white bell peppers. I did drop a couple of seeds of tomatoes. Some shallots, <laughs> as Jody would say. And, um, oh yeah, and I dropped some... Um, some purple kale yeah purple kale so i'm looking forward to that um i just wanted to start them in here and uh really i was looking forward to taking a break y'all <laughs> yeah okay so number five is to find out and know where your problems areas in your garden like i have an area in my garden that it stays wet and that is on the side uh, where some of my um, my banana plants and those are the ones closer to the house it, it stays moist over there so know where your problems areas are if you have a plant that loves uh, wet soil that's a great area for it um, but if you have some plants that don't, then you know that you cannot plant them there. So also know where the rain comes off of your house or some structure you have um, in your garden, like a shade or something. You will know where that rainfall falls so you won't drop a seed under that area where you have rain falling. So it's just knowing uh problem areas in your garden that's number five right i'm looking forward to this growing season a lot of things i will be doing in my garden it will definitely going to be new to me but i'm willing and i'm ready for the challenge yes but listen guys i also want to share with you all that today a friend of mine stopped by and he took me to Home Depot and I wanted to go to Target. So in tomorrow's video, I will share with you all what we picked up at those two stores. Yeah, I'm going to share. And um, they're really cool. And um, yeah, I definitely want to let you all know what I got. <laughs> yeah. But um, I'm looking forward to it all. Um, I have a lot of seeds to drop. Jada will be here tomorrow. She wants to make her the nectar for the hummingbird feeders. So I have everything ready for her. And uh, she's going to hang those hummingbird feeders out. The hummingbirds will be coming back into our area late February, early March. So definitely, I definitely want to be ready uh, for the hummingbirds when they come. I want to make sure that they have food when they do uh, stop by. Yeah, Jada said it would be so wrong if the hummingbirds show up and there's nothing for them to drink. So <laughs> I'm definitely going to get that together. Now, this is um, a free seed that I received from Baker's Creek, and I think it is that, um, it's that red, uh, I'm sorry, purple kale. That's what it is, purple kale. Yeah, so I'm just dropping a few of those seeds here, and everything in this container, it won't stay. Uh, I'm just using it as a little incubator, you know. I'm just uh, dropping these seeds here, but they won't stay. I will uh, replant them in the beds uh, in which they will go. So, okay, then there's another thing I want to share with you all, too. 
and we will do that tomorrow. And that is, I'm going to build another garden bed. Yep, I'm going to build another garden bed. Uh, I'm looking forward to them so I can have something definitely on the side. Now, I don't know if I want to make a long one or just some boxes of short ones. But we'll see. But, yeah, I'm going to do it tomorrow. Yeah. But, anyway, guys, I want to thank all of you all for all your kind words and um, well wishes. I'm feeling so much better. You know, I'm doing great. And it's at a great time because this is the time that is so busy. I think at the beginning of the spring season and harvest time is the two most busiest times. And that is dropping all your seeds, getting all your seeds out, um, and um, all the little special seeds that we have. Um, planting them in different containers or wherever you want them in your garden. And this is a time where it's extremely busy and you must stay on your toes. So if you are in a zone where it's too cold for you to get out in your garden, if it is not snowing, you know, maybe you take 30 minutes of your day just to clean one area of your garden uh, just so when is when your last frost day pass, you won't use all your time cleaning instead of um, dropping your seeds. So hopefully it worked out that way. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, if you live in a comet now, I seen our friend Sapa. Wow, you have so much snow, so much snow. And I do understand, you know. No one, no one should get out in that snow. Yeah, but I know that um, many of us are dropping seeds in our home and that's really cool. And that's the only way we're going to stay on top of this thing, especially when, you know, your your last frost date is in, uh, in May or April. You have a very short growing season. So, yeah, you want to plant, drop your seeds now. So... When, when it's time to bring your plants out, they will be nice and strong and healthy. Yeah. So now I am watering um, all of this. Uh, I put a lot of um, leaves and stems and broken branches. I also put a bag of topsoil in here. I'm going to put a little bit of Kellogg's in here and just bring it on down so uh, I'm just watering it very well just to get everything all nice and moist in there and here is my cucumbers yeah so I'm giving them a little water also just to get them through this night because I didn't water anything today no but anyway, guys, I want to thank you all so, so much for hanging out with me today. I hope all goes well with you and your family. Yeah, I I don't know what I'm going to do with this bed, but I'm going to take up some of these greens and I'm going to eat them. Yeah, but my uh, nasturtiums are doing really, really good. They are beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah, but I hope you have a great day. Tomorrow is... Monday. Yeah, guys, you all have a great Monday. Later, y'all. <music>